Welcome. I'm reading this 1956 biography of General Chuck Yeager, and in it, it explains how Colonel Albert Boyd selected him as a test pilot. He said, he must select the man who will thereafter carry himself with credit, not just to the service, but to himself as well and all men like him. When it has finally been done, no one must ever be able to say, you see, this type of fellow was wrong, let's close the door. The door would thereafter be shut, and who would open it? So why did he pick Chuck Yeager? As he was justifying his choice to General Chidlaw, he said, All of his flying is done just absolutely in accordance with the schedule and with this perfect precision. It is just a pleasure to watch him fly. Then, of course, in talking with him, you can't help observing his stability. He's just as solid as the building. So this man had taken notice that Chuck Yeager was faithful in his small duties of flying and was precise. In the same way, if you are precise with the small duties you've been given, such as your physics homework, you'll be ready when the big opportunity comes. I'm Dr. Courtney. This problem is a fun one, but it also presents a challenge because we can't latch on to one single physics equation, substitute our values, and compute an answer. We have to consider what's happening physically in the problem and develop our own relationships. The scenario is this. A bat has flown into the vertical front window of a subway train and the train is accelerating. The question is, what is the minimum acceleration required so that the bat doesn't fall off? As we think about this, we are dealing with forces, accelerations, and mass. In particular, the forces that are acting, the bat is going to tend to fall off due to its own weight. So that is a gravitational force. What's going to make the bat stick? Well, we are told that there is a coefficient of friction between the bat and the window. So if this frictional force will tend to make the bat stick. So these are the two opposing forces. If we set them equal to each other, we should be able to determine the minimum acceleration that will barely cause the bat to stick. As we develop the problem, we'll take two approaches. The first will be to draw a picture of what's happening physically, and the second will be to make a point-by-point -point plan for how we will then go on to evaluate the problem. Now, I'm no artist, but here we go. Ready for this? That's my bat. The, it is stuck to a subway train window. The train is accelerating and we do not know that acceleration. We have a gravitational force acting on the bat. We have a frictional force acting between the bat and the window. Now it's useful in this kind of problem to separate the, the particular body in question and make what's called a free body diagram. So we're going to isolate the bat. I'm going to enlarge it for purposes of illustration. So this is going to be our free body diagram. We have the force of gravity acting on the bat. We have a frictional force acting in the opposite direction. And there's another force that we haven't discussed yet. As the bat is stuck to the window of the subway car, there is a reaction force between those two surfaces that acts perpendicularly. This is known as the normal force so I will call it F sub n, or the reaction force. And we will consider that more a little bit later. Are we given anything else? Well, we are given one single value here, which is that the coefficient of friction is 0.83. I've changed it a little bit so that you can work the problem yourself later. In any physics problem, we want to check that the units are MKS units and if need be, do any conversions. Secondly, all we have right now are designations for different forces. So we would like to express each force in terms of acceleration, which we'll call A, mass, which we'll call M, uh, the coefficient of friction, which we were given, mu, etc. 
Thirdly, since the frictional force and the gravitational force are the primary forces balancing each other, we will set them equal to each other to determine the minimum conditions for the bat to stick. Then we will substitute for each of those forces the expressions that we developed in part two. Then we can solve for the acceleration, still symbolically, Then we can substitute specific values and calculate A. Finally, before we report our answer, we want to consider how many significant digits we should include. All right, now that we have a plan, let's put it in place as we evaluate the problem. First of all, the only value we were given is this coefficient of friction, and it is a unitless number, so we're good to go on MKS units. Secondly, we want to express each force in terms of other physical parameters. Let's start with the gravitational force. That's going to be equal to the mass of the bat times gravitational acceleration. Next, let's consider the frictional force. That's equal to the coefficient of friction times that normal force that we introduced here and uh, designated on our free body diagram. What is that normal force going to be? Well, recalling Newton's second law, it's going to be the mass of the bat times the acceleration of the bat. Now, the acceleration of the bat and the acceleration of the train are the same as long as the two are stuck together. So this acceleration is the one we're looking for in this problem. So now we want to set the gravitational force equal to the frictional force and substitute the expressions we developed. Then we want to solve and isolate the acceleration. We can divide both sides by mu m. And we notice that the mass appears in both the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel that out. Frankly, I'm kind of happy about this because we weren't given the mass. And this is an important lesson for solving any physics problem. If you think you're going to need a certain value, you can go ahead and proceed without it, or perhaps you can express that value in terms of other values that you do have. Otherwise, you can leave it symbolic as you progress through the problem, and it may well cancel out. So now we have that the acceleration is equal to the gravitational acceleration divided by the coefficient of friction, and let's go ahead and substitute those values, 9.8 meters per second squared over 0.83. That gives us an acceleration of 11.807 meters per second squared. How many significant digits should we use to report that answer? Well, let's go back and consider our given values, of which there was only one. It has two significant figures. So we should also report our answer to two significant figures. So we need to round that to 12, and the minimum acceleration needed is about 12 meters per second squared. Before we finish the problem, let's assess our answer to see whether it makes sense. First of all, in any physics problem, we want to check our units. Now, this isn't checking MKS units as we did at first. We look at the units associated with our answer to see whether it is what we expect. When we substituted for gravitational acceleration and for the coefficient of friction, we included the units along with, so that our final answer has units of meters per second squared. Since we were computing an acceleration, that's good. That's what we would expect. So we expect meters per second squared for acceleration. So that lends some confidence to our answer. But what about the value? Is it too big, too small, about right? To do that, let's consider physically what is happening. We have the gravitational acceleration divided by the coefficient of friction. 
the coefficient of friction is less than 1. And if you recall, most coefficients of friction are less than 1. There are a few surface pairs between which the coefficient of friction is greater than 1, but generally speaking, the coefficient of friction is often less than 1, as it is here. So if we're dividing a number by another number that's somewhat less than 1, our answer should be slightly bigger than that numerator. In this case, 0.83 isn't so much below 1, so we expect our answer to be of the same order of magnitude as the gravitational acceleration, meaning not 10 or 100 times larger, but close, which we do have. In fact, we have our minimum acceleration as 12 meters per second squared. So how can we say this uh, as we assess the problem? Well, since the coefficient of friction is less than 1, we do expect A to be greater than the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, but same order of magnitude. So considering our units and the order of magnitude that we expect our answer to be, we have confidence that this answer is probably correct.